been uh, included in the ordinance. These are new ones that we want to add want to add to it. The blue ones are places where something didn't match. Either the ordinance wasn't right or the signage wasn't right. But it could be either way. And we're trying to, to straighten that out. The way the law is, there's two different laws that we're, we're trying to get in compliance with. There's one that is basically the regulation about how you operate speed detection devices. And then there is a law that governs how these speed limits and things are established by, by DOT. So it, although it looks like a lot, it's really mostly housekeeping. And we're trying to make sure that we line our ordinance, our signage, and the state law up. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Chief. Sure. Perfect. Thank you. Moving back to item, the first item on the agenda, to discuss the current state of future improvements of city parks. Mr. Kenny Smith will address. Good morning, sir. Good morning. We're coming to a point where we need some direction on how to move forward with numerous items in related to uh, related to our parks. The first, of course, is Solomon Park. Uh, Solomon Park has been on our agenda for several years now, uh, especially with our Main Street program who kind of adopted that as a project. Uh, as you know, we had to move some electrical lines that were going right through the middle of the, the park area. We put those underground. We also had a water main that was going right through the park area. We had to relocate that before we could do any work on the park itself. I have given you a spreadsheet in your packet that shows our revenues to date and our expenses to date in relation to Solomon Park. Uh, we received $100,000 from Spalding County a couple of years ago. We, in turn, as the city, uh, earmarked the remainder of our content commissioner contingency fund to the park, which was $94,670. The electric department spent almost $74,000 with the relocation of the electrical line. Water and wastewater spent $108,000, almost $109,000 to relocate locate that water main. So we have spent to date about $377,000 on the park. And the Main Street program has, according to the finance department, has $63,194 left to go to the park or funds on hand for the park. So we kind of need some direction at this point as to where to go with Solomon Park. Uh, we certainly don't want to go out and start asking for private funds uh, until we get your blessing on moving forward based on these expenses and revenues to date. So the first item I, I wanted your consensus on was moving forward with the proposal for Solomon Park. You have also in your packet uh, from Paragon Consulting, who's been doing this work pro bono to this point, uh, the different phases in the development of Solomon Park. Phase one would be $831,470, and you can see the different items there that they have listed, which would be a part of phase one which is the bulk of the infrastructure, landscaping, side irrigation, and those kind of things. Uh, so phase one, $831,000, and I think we have about $63,000 earmarked for that. So we haven't discussed the development of that property in some time, so again, before we go out and start asking for private funds, which was the original proposal to do the part with private funds, donations, naming rights, that kind of thing, before we do that, we wanted a consensus and the blessings of the board to move forward or since it had been some time since we discussed it, make sure there were no changes on the horizon. Um, over this past year and a half, two years, we've also looked at possibly having a hotel or somebody else come in and possibly de develop the Solomon Street portion of that, which um, would be favorable for the 
community as well. Um, at the same time, I've heard from the folks that are in the, that type of business, they really need to be on, they would prefer to be up on Georgia 16 somewhere. Um, I like the conceptual plan of the park. I think if you're going to have cornhole tournaments, blues and barbecue festival, I don't know if all the stuff in the center with the sidewalks and the trees and stuff, would it be better to leave that open green space so it could be more of a multi-use versus you know, basically just having parkway. So I think there's some different ideas and some different philosophies of what to use with the park. And I understand your frustration. And so I'm going to let the rest of the board chime in where they feel. Well, I'm not frustrated. I just, I just don't want to decide where to go with it. Yeah, I don't want to present to a, a, a prospective donor, here's our park, here's the plan, and a decision be made later all that up, I don't think that would be fair to a potential donor for us to pitch one thing and do something else. And this originally so, came from the Downtown Development Authority from, and then it went to the Main Street Board as their baby. Is that correct? Mm, or is it the other I think the Main Street group has been I, I working see. on this from the conception, haven't we? Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. Good morning, Good morning. board members. Um, the um, Main Street group, we uh, were given the opportunity to develop the park from the DDA. The DDA at that time didn't have any funds, so they didn't see a need for that organization to continue to hold on to the project. And this was prior to a splash vote before City Hall wasn't even for sure when and if that would even be developed. So we took the project about three years ago and uh, we solicited Paragon Consulting Group and they helped us with the conceptual plans that you see here on the board. And um, we also had input from the general public and the elected officials also in Spalding County. Uh, a smaller portion of that is Spalding County in front of the courthouse and the former streets and the old, um, I think, juvenile offices that was there. So what you see uh, presented now will have been um, discussed throughout the community and this is a concept we have. So um, we haven't been told that there was going to be a change uh, in the project or even a potential change. It's just that we didn't have a Main Street manager for several months and there have been a few changes since then, but we do have someone on board now that's going to be handling that office. Um, so um, right at the moment, I think uh, we'll just, uh, I'm glad that Ms. Smith invited me to come down today. Uh, we're just waiting. Once we get someone at the leadership uh, position and we can pick up where we left off at for is um, how we want to go about raising the balance of the funds and using other possible revenue streams to help bring the project to its completion. You know, before it's phase one. And I and I made some notes with uh, what Mr. Smith mentioned earlier. What has been uh, spent by the city, its departments, which is substantial, and along with the funds that we were able to get from Spalding County. So hopefully, I hope I, yes, ma'am. Uh, and Brian actually, uh, uh, Upson, actually, um, Paragon actually did the plan. The, um, yes, they they did the plans, and uh, they uh, of course consulted. Main Street, and the um, and we opened it up for comments from our board, which is, it represents and reflects the community, the Main Street board, which has DDA, uh, Downtown Council, um, City and County representative, elected officials, along with a Sun City Peace Street rep uh, representative, and people from the business community, uh, downtown resident uh, representative. So it has a broad. Uh, reflection of the sentiments of the citizens of the city here. Does the board members have any like comments, oh, yes. questions, Please. recommendations? I have a question since I'm kind of new on the, can any, everybody hear me? The $100,000 that we received from the county, was that a one-time payment from them? One time. There was some leftover funds at the end of their budget year, I believe. 
so they gave them to the park. And, and we have had some developers look closely at that piece of property just uh, as, as they were in town they would see it and ask us what our plans were for the property uh, but to date we haven't had any serious inquiries and we've we you know advised them of different incentives for the area and so far nobody has came with a serious offer so like I said we're at that point where we need to make a decision and move on. Um, in terms of the lawn seating and near the amphitheater how does that relate in size to the Jeremy Buffington from Paragon is here, so he might be able to, to he basically <coughs> did this concept, so I'm going to ask Jeremy, he may be able to answer your questions about size and scope. Good morning. Good, Good morning. Jeremy. Uh, yeah, the question about the, the amphitheater seating. Um, we We've basically uh, looked at something similar to like a Lakewood type thing where you've got um, uh, uh, concrete seating uh, steps and so forth there on the main level terrace and then you've got a lot of lawn space there for seating, kind of an overflow. Um, a lot of these uh, spaces that we have here are designed to be um, multi-use type type uh, areas where you've got your fountain area, the pergola and that type of thing where your amphitheater seating can kind of carry over into that space. Um, the area back there um, where the open grass paved lawn is where we might have vendor locations is what we've, we've uh, specified there can also be used as open space lawn play areas and that type of thing so let's say someone comes out throws a frisbee football that type of thing all that's lawn area back there um, it's got a system in it to where the actual vendors can drive on it and park and it'll hold the weight of the vehicles but it'll also double as a open park space area so uh, some of these areas in here that are designated specifically for uh, the amphitheater vend uh, vendor space that type of use can also be doubled as open space park you know what was in terms of the <laughs> We did figure out a seating capacity for it. Uh, I don't know the number right off the top of my head right now. We were, we were, yeah, close to 3,000 uh, in the 3,000 range for all of the grass pave area. I mean, all the grass area above the amphitheater seating and the seating as well. And right in front of the amphitheater there, there's an open space you can see, which was sort of a. Uh, VIP uh, area, if you will, seating where you could put, uh, you know, tables, seats, that type of thing, right in front of the stage. My my, um, my understanding is that the way that you've got the space, though, is you do all the parkways, the trees, the fountain and stuff, and then you do the amphitheater last. Is that that is cool? So that why would you? If you're trying to build an amphitheater, build the amphitheater. Because it wasn't designed to be an amphitheater, it was designed to be a park. Yeah. The amphitheater is a piece of the park. Uh, the, the, the space is the park. It's there for, for park space. So in terms of the phases, what, what are they? I'm sorry, come again. I, I, in terms of the phases, what, what is in each different phase? What aspect of the construction is in each phase? I got your sheet here. Yeah, look at that. Basically, what we've come up with is, is just oh, br mind. bringing in the walkways. and Okay. I got you. I found the book sheet up. I got you now. I don't want you to have to explain it when I go. <laughs> And the, the amphitheater, uh, I believe, is around eight hundred thousand dollars. Again, you can spend, you can put a flatbed truck there, or you can put a multi-million dollar, amp, you know, stage and lights and all that stuff. So that's kind of open. But if you go ahead and did the park, uh, you could still use the amphitheater space 
on a limited basis without all the frills. I mean, a basic stage like we have over here at the park at six without investing $800,000. So you could still use the seating and the lawn area and have events there with some cheaper stage as we continue to raise funds for the amphitheater if, if that's your wishes. I think that was the plan. I think that's right. That's correct. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. But but phase one and the other phases does go ahead and plan for the foundation and everything for an ampli for a nice amphitheater. You go ahead and have that under construction originally, but you don't have to do all the elaborate phases of the amphitheater until you have the money available. Just knowing the couple of events that we have going on in the community right now with the June Jam, we've got the Cornhole Tournament. So if you do all this, you can't fit the Cornhole events and possibly other events like that. The Blues and Barbecue Festival is dysfunctional in regards to it being stuck in the parking lot away from the stage area. So there's, you know, talking to some of the folks this weekend, how to get it close together. So with this layout, it's not putting, you can't put vehicles and stuff out in the grass area. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out what we've got going now. If we just do the parkway and maybe or maybe not doing the amphitheater, is that, are we? When you say not going to do anything, not putting in the structure or completely redesigning? Well, I mean, if you just do the park with, with pathways and stuff, it limits you in terms of the scope of what you can use the property for in my, in my opinion in regards to I mean, you, you can't I don't see where you can fit 70 60 or 70 cornhole boards for a cornhole tournament if you wanted to do uh, well this area here where the vendors are on the top left of the page it's bigger than a football field um, so it's quite a substantial space up there alone um, <laughs> Um, the cornhole, the cornhole thing, the games they're doing now. Where are they doing them? Well, right now they they run it basically from Fifth Street all the way to the, the ridge of the old city hall site, and then they dog leg it north up to behind um, the housing that's up on Broad Street. That's for the cornhole. Cornhole, cornhole tournament. So, so if there's an area that's if it's graded, if it's flat. In that area, where that absolutely yes. Um, uh, so I, I understand that we want to uh, the park, but why would we try to set up for a uh, cornhole if if uh, there was an event in that area? Why couldn't they use the same area for the cornhole? Little, little, little trees sitting in it, in the sidewalks. No, I'm not not here. I'm talking about where they're doing it now. They're doing, doing it. it. They're doing it. Yes, nice. they're doing it. The, on this one up here. Let, let me let me, let me go on, let me go on record Mr. saying that I'm. I'm not here to propose a cornhole park. Okay. I understand. I, I just want to make sure that we're not building and trying to solicit funds so that we can have a place to host cornhole tournaments. This, this is something, hopefully, that's going to be used by the entire community mm -hmm. and not just people that want to play cornhole. Yes, yeah, so the Blues and Barbecue Festival. I mean, whether I'm just looking at it as a multi use. So I guess I think of it in this way because I think initially I thought, okay, with vision and all that, but I also think of Piedmont and Grant Parks and all these other parks where there are divisions within the park that the entire space is used for an event. So if you, if you want to be at the concert, you come down to the concert area. If you want to be able to see, if you don't, you sit further away on your blanket and you do whatever you're doing behind the trees in the shade. So I mean, I think my concern is what is the vision, the, you know, the visibility Concept behind the park was that this would be a multi-purpose, multi-use venue. Um, and 
And so the amphitheater was just a piece of the entire park. So this whole space has been, been designed as a park um, for passive use. Uh, it has shade, it has walkways, it has areas for vendor use as well where we can bring in, you know, uh, basically trucks with trailers that can park in these spaces here. But when they're not being used for this venue, this is a, I mean, it's a football field out here basically. You've got all this green space area. You've got the green space above the, the, the area of the amphitheater there, right there. Would that, would that be yeah. enough to accommodate a cornhole tournament? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's a football field. So, I mean, how, I, I, how many, how many holes? Well, a cornhole, a cornhole board's no bigger than like three by two. So, I mean, you could stack 60 of them in there probably. 60? I mean, I'm, I'm if speculating. If, it's level, if the area yeah. is leveled out. And this area right in here is absolutely. That's that's what this space is for. It's for stage, for people to come back here for vendor lines, for people to basically migrate from the stage area here to a social gathering area here to actually coming back here and actually buying vendor products. But it's, it's, as a football field, it's also big enough to accommodate a second stage. So in terms of like having a yeah. festival, Absolutely. We have multiple spaces here. We've also incorporated the space for the city hall here, too. And what you don't see in here is um, our plans for, for this area here is actual open. Um, it's a patio space in the back side of this building. And so you would come up out of the park um, to an upper level terrace, which is also a, 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 a a fourth venue here. You've got an open area back over here, which is kind of a, um, a park space in itself that's broken away. So you've got the, basically you've got the amphitheater is one, your open space park area here, you've got a large open space for the um, all this paved walkway and system here, and then you've got that, that, that fourth area back in here, and then also back up on the patio here for the city hall. So all of these venues and, and would we'll, we'll tie together, you know, uh, back and forth from one another and, and, and all play against one another. And the total price tag on this phase is, I'm showing $1.3 million. That is including, that is not including the stage. That's everything but the stage. That's everything except for the actual amphitheater. And, and again, just like Kenny said, you, you can spend $3 million, $2 million, $1 million, whatever you want to spend would on you, that. Would you go ahead and build the seating area and leave the, the area where the amphitheater would be built? Or would, at that point? Just that That's what we're proposing so that you can do what you want with the amphitheater at that point. Basically, you could, like you said, you can pull a flatbed truck up there if you wanted to and, and have a venue on it. Mr. Mayor, I, yes, if I could. Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> since I was part of the original concept and had the conversation with Jeremy and Brian Upson with Paragon and for the Main Street concern, what we did, Jeremy, uh, mentioned it earlier. We were also looking at in the event if there were multiple events going to take place the same day, whereas you could have along the Broad Street entrance side that could be vendors, whether they were selling um, from food items to uh, produce. Then on the side that backs up to the 6th Street uh, Bridge, he mentioned the cornhole opportunity there, along with all the uh, the large food trucks can park on that surface, as he stated, without damaging the, the sod because of that particular paving system. The passive component of it, and we just envision where you have several thousand people in and out of the park during the day, during that activity. Certain things going on simultaneously. You the food trucks over there, the corner will talk somewhere else, vending along the Broad Street entrance, and a big concert that could take place that evening. And one of the reasons we thought it would best to do it this way, we would get all the infrastructure and all the major construction component out of the way first. And then we could show the public what 
our, our intentions are, and then we could go on a, a big uh, campaign to raise the funds to build the actual stage, green room, and all of those things. And uh, Jeremy and Ms. Smith stated that could be up to us on how elaborate that could be. It could be just renting equipment, stage, temporary staging like you do in other venues that bring it in, set it up, once it's complete, break it down, move it out. We could do that. But we also envision this being, so to speak, uh, I guess to give you the best uh, example, this will have what we will hope the effect of Centennial Park in downtown Atlanta where with this green space, then development could come around the park and this will give us a sense of a city center that we lack and we don't think any other community of our size will be able to compare to Griffin with what we will be offering, you know, will not be up on a square like some of the other communities. But the uniqueness of our city, the grid system, and this particular design. Um, if there needs to be some little tweaking, we think it could be done, but overall, we think we've addressed every aspect of what we would think that the community would love. A hundred years from now, I think they would um, praise the leadership that we have here today as going forward and putting together something like this for the benefit of the overall citizenry. So right now we've spent a pro, um, the money that we have available to spend is the sixty three thousand or do we have anything else in reserve at this time? We don't have anything else in reserve but the sixty three thousand one hundred and ninety four dollars. So we gotta raise another one point two five. Basically the Well, phase one's eight hundred and thirty one, which will give you basically the part without the pergola, the benches, the fountain, those kind of things. It'll give you the the green portion and the infrastructure portion. Kenny, does that 831, does that include what we've already spent for uh, water line and electric line? No, sir. So we've spent $376,000 today. Yes, sir. And we're questioning to whether we want to move forward. Well, we had to spend that either way. Okay. Right. Uh, I mean, no matter what happened to the property, we had to get that water main over to the side from the middle of the property. Even if somebody came in and wanted to pay us a million bucks for it and build something there, we still had to move that water line. And the electric line also had to be moved because it was going right down through the middle of it. So we had to do that anyway. All right. Thank you. Unfortunately, it was just a little more expensive than we anticipated. Yeah, there's a street right there. There was a street there as well. So our decision right now will be whether we basically take any other redevelopment off the table completely so that we can focus 100% on that. Yes, that's what staff needs to know. Okay. And Main Street and everybody involved needs that answer so we can move ahead. And Main Street is still, Mr. Main, Main Street is still committed to do, take care of helping do the fundraising and but. Yes, sir, Ms. Mayor, that, that is how the city was able to get the $100,000 from the county was the Main Street effort approaching them for some of their uh, hotel motel dollars that was unrestricted. Anybody else have any comments or want to? I was just thinking this is probably not that important, but how are we doing as far as the timeline for this, as far as when the project originated? The, was there a timeline or are we on schedule? Well, the timeline is all based on what funds are available okay. to do it. So, again, we really haven't uh, put a lot of effort into raising funds outside at this point. Uh, until we got the water line moved and all that. We, we felt like people would be more apt to make donations if they saw dirt turning down there. That You know, there's been some discussion about, well, is it really going to be a park or are we just going to leave it like it is? So that's kind of what got us to this point. When we had interest on the private side of the development, did they care to tell us reasons of why not, or we just didn't hear back? Was it the area? Was it? We, we, we had a proposal for a housing development, but 
this board pretty much threw, knocked that off the table. So for me, uh, this has been the plan and um, it, we kind of centered it around uh, the uh, redevelopment of, of this um, historic set hall building. And we don't have any other offers. So why wouldn't we move forward? And I've talked to folks in terms of hotels and things, and they keep they keep going back towards we want to be on 16. Oh, okay. And, and so, it's, so it's the lo location I mean, we've of had downtown. Some tire kickers, but do we currently have interest in private development? Have they came forward and said you guys plan to move forward? We might on this particular property. We've had we've had some people look at it, but I don't have a commitment from anybody. But we have strong interest. Would you say we have? Strong I would interest? not call it strong interest. No, I would call it interest. But and I have kept in touch with them, and I've told them leading up to September 25th. I said, if you have interest, I need to know before September 25th because we need to make a decision and move on. And I don't have any responses. Hmm. So it, that's what I say. At some point. I gotta cut the cord and move on. Well, I'm ready for us to move on. The, the interest I was hoping never materialized, and uh, there's other adjacent parcels that could be redeveloped once this is completed. And um, so let's let's roll. In my opinion, Mr. Mayor, I just remember. I just want to remind you. To date, you know, even though we've uh, haven't been as aggressive here in the last, you know. 12, 14 months, but we've sold, I guess on average, about $40 a brick, $14,000 worth of bricks yes, that sells out there that the people have shown that there is some interest, and that money is um, yes, a small amount, but it's substantial when you think about the, the cost of one brick, and uh, you got $14,000 worth of sales already been generated. So I would recommend if we move forward with this, which I'm I feel like we will, but that's up to the board. But if we move forward with this, we have Brian put that back out on Facebook, on social media, that those bricks are available for sale. So, this person, local interest. Yeah, we'll we'll kick off a complete campaign once this, you give us to go ahead to move forward. I'm okay with it. Thank you. I'm okay with it. As, as long as we got a place for a cornhole, I'm okay with it. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. <laughs> and I, I, I want to go ahead and talk about some other parks as well, but it, okay. uh, Mr. Armin just said something that reminded me. Uh, we have our new uh, economic development director who started yesterday here with us this morning, Patrick Kay. Uh, nice looking gentleman with the bow tie there. And uh, he started yesterday, and I hope he's going to stay after hearing that he has to raise $2 million to, to do this part. So You're welcome. Not, not sure he was aware of that to start with, so. Excellent. Surprise. Okay. So also we have several other things as relate to parks. We still have the park on Chapel Street, the Flowers Memorial, well not Memorial, but the Flowers Park. Cora Park. Cora Park. And we are, uh, as you know, we discussed earlier that there may be some land swapping going on with the owner of some property there and the land bank. And those negotiations are ongoing. We have $40,000 that we've rolled over for the last two or three years in the budget that if we can get some agreement on the property over there, uh, we can start with a passive park in that area. So I wanted to update you that that's still kind of in the works, but there's some discussion about that land swap and I don't really know where that's going. But we do have $40,000 to start that. Uh, Raymond Head Park, we've had some discussion about restrooms at Raymond Head Park. Uh, I suspect that you may have a comment tonight about where we are on those restrooms at Raymond Head Park. So I wanted to uh, be prepared for that. We have $100,000 in last year's budget that was designated just parks in general. 
We rolled that money over to this fiscal year because we didn't make a decision about exactly what direction we were going in last year. Uh, depending on what you want to do about restrooms at Raymond Head Park, that is $100,000 that we could use somewhere else in relation to parks. So you didn't have anything to say about my suggestion to parks, the restrooms at the city park. I want that to be considered. Yes, ma'am. I was going to move on to city park here in just a minute, or or we can we can do that now because our 10-year improvement plan for city park. I think you have a copy of that, or at least I gave you some financial information on improvements for City Park that does not include new restrooms for City Park. Uh, it includes $100,000 to replace some of the playground equipment over there. The tennis courts are going to need resurfacing again. Some of the tables and grills are in pretty bad shape over there, uh, replacing a pavilion, updating landscaping. We do have in the electric department budget $200,000 to go in and replace all the lighting with LED lighting. So we've got that in the budget at $200,000 and we're keeping our fingers crossed that that's going to cover that expense. So that'll make a huge difference over there. So I do not have in these figures any restroom improvements for City Park. So I guess the, what I'm trying to get to is we have $100,000. And I, I need to know. I need to know what you want to do. With outside restroom. For City Park, new, new restrooms for City Park. You want to demolition the old ones? Well, we've got how many, how many bathrooms do we have in City Park? One okay. next to the um, pavilion one. Uh, pavilion one, and then you've got um, up by the skateboard. Now, it's the skateboard one. Is was that built by the county, or was that built, built by, by the, the city? The city. So, that's a, do we maintain it, or does the county does, maintain it? The county does. I don't know what that one looked like, but that one down in the park is terrible. Yeah. The skateboard park one is it's fair. Scary. It's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's fair. I it's actually it. scary to go in. <laughs> it's it's always in pretty good condition. Can the the, the lower bathroom can that be, be completely up, upgraded or rebuilt? What would you? It can be a regutted. When I say regutted, it needs a, a facelift. We're back to where we were when y'all hired me in '92. We haven't dumped any money in that park in years, and you know, it's, it, when you go out there, there's a lot of things that need to be replaced, and there just hasn't been money for it. How many stalls are in that bathroom at the bottom? Three. I think it's three. I think it's three, but you feel like you're all the time. scared to go in. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Depending yeah. if the ball's up, it's four. If it's not, there's three. Three. What? The stalls, they be, uh, if you've not been out there, they beat it up pretty good. Oh, yeah. uh, Ms. Ward and I talked about this. And they need to be gutted and, re and you can rehab them. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the structure. It's the internal workings that need to be I mean, it's, it's split face block. I mean, it ain't going anywhere. It's the inside needs to be ripped out and rebuilt. Ms. Moore, would you like to make a recommendation of let's put $100,000? I made it last year. I understand. <laughs> into City Park, including up to make the bathroom a top priority? Uh, my, uh, my recommendation is that we, the, if the money that we have, the $100,000 we have, is that we put it invested in the restrooms, in the, uh, at least those in the bottom, mm -hmm. in the main park. We invest that money in that bat in that restaurant. Can I ask a question? And I, I, I agree with that. I, I mentioned it to Mr. Smith. Um, the portable restroom that is owned by the county that we use for events um, downtown. Do we do we ever get a cost, or does anybody know a cost approximately how much one of those costs? So in the event that we have an event at Raymond Head Park or any of the other parts that we don't have a restroom there. Yes, yeah, so I, I talked to Spalding County about that and they said that they would not allow private entities to use those restrooms. It would have to be a, a county function. They said the small one, which has one stall male and one stall female, is around $25,000. 
The larger ones are about $35,000. However, they, they warned me that it's not so much the restrooms themselves, it's the maintenance. You gotta, you gotta pull them to the location. Depending on the, the length of the, of the event, you may have to dump them at least once during the event. Mm -hmm. They're kind of like a porta potty. They only can hold so much. So you may have to dump them once during an event, say if you have an all-day event. Uh, you may have to dump them more than once. And then you've got to haul them away after the event. So they said manpower-wise, they were much more intensive than they anticipated. So about 25, he said between 25 and 30 for a small and 35 to 40 for a large one. And Mr. Amin make an answer, the hotel, motel tax paid for the Spalding County's bathrooms from my recollection? Yes. Um, the um, Once again, Main Street approached the county about restrooms that were going to be used at the park at 6. And that's when the, we acquired the two, I think, all together. It might have been about $113,000. And that was part of the building out of the storage facility on the, at the, um, on the stage at the park at 6, those two restrooms. And where that was set up at that time, uh, all the rental and everything came back to the city of Griffin through the Main Street program. And we, uh, the, the information that was dispersed during that time was any city, county, we even included the school system that needed use of those restrooms, they would have access to them along with downtown council if there was any event that was related to all of that. Uh, Ms. Smith is correct about public, general public use. Now if the city of Griffin has something going at Raymond Head Junior Park, then going back through the county now, uh, you can request that facility. But it, it was, was not set up for right. Dowd, I mean, want to do something you want to bring them yeah, out. I, and when we start trying to um, supply restrooms for people that use those parks, there's no charge for a person to use those, those our pocket community parks. You're talking about the use of those uh, mm -hmm. mobile restrooms? Or are we talking about the mobile parks? She's talking about the there's no use. No so charge. No. I think we um, start to set a precedence when we start worrying about somebody having a, a, a restroom. They're not, there's no charge for the park. So myself, if I wanted to do something, I'd rent a mobile restroom myself. You know, I'm not paying anything for the park. So porta potties. Yeah, I mean, you have an option to rent a porta potty from a, mm -hmm. a private company if you if you had an event that needed a restaurant. Uh, uh, and I, and I, I think that was a part of my initial plan was if someone wanted to use it and they wanted restrooms and we we they can rent them from us. We can provide well, they can them. Always enter from or get them from uh, M and B. They can get them from M and B, but it's just. I'm, I'm just not, the, the residents, the people that I've talked to in the area are totally against permanent restrooms. That's the people that live in the apartment complex. Um, they don't, they don't want to see that. But for events, these back to school events that we have, that attracts thousands of people that come out to the park and they're cooking and you know, there's no, there's nowhere for you to, to wash your hands. There's nowhere for you to go to the, you know, they're giving away food and supplies. There's a pavilion over there. It's a grill over there. And it's just... Is there water? Is there water over there, Brent? Dr. Kelly. Is there a water line at Raymond Head Park? A water box? Yeah, we've looked at that. There is one or it's not one? No, you can be. I guess that means there's not. <laughs> Not in the park. There's water adjacent to it. To be you, we could put what we could run a line from the nearest street. line but into the park, but there's not one in there. Turner Street Park. What on the Turner Street Park? See, no. That's, no. that's what we run. You run into when you start. Right. Put, uh, do Put one, one yeah, we don't have facilities in any of our neighborhood parks. City Park is the only park that has facilities. 
but if the back to school was a joint project with yes, the city or county, with, um, then you would cooperate with Spalding County and, and build a relationship there. With that's 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 the just trying to yes, sir. Tied together, so it's, it's not a permanent structure there where people are trashing it, taking advantage of doing whatever, making it look like the one in City Park. And you know, I'm, I'm trying to avoid talking about some little kid, something bad happening. Um, I mean, depending on the event, you could always, you know, ask the county to use their restrooms, but. My history with it is they're pretty particular about who uses them. It, it has to be a city or county or downtown sanctioned event. Most, mostly because of the overtime involved in the employees it takes to set them up and pull them back down and clean them and monitor them and dump them and all that stuff. So we beat this one up pretty good. So right now, direction to staff from what I'm hearing is let's put money back into City Park, let's get the gym of the city back in order. And um, $100,000 towards City Park, ever, electric department ever, ever what it takes to remodel the bathrooms and then whatever's left over, some of these other items towards City Park. And then, I have a question about the lighting department where you say replaced it with LED. Is they, um, oh my brain, that the addition of any lighting or is it just replacement? Uh, addition. Okay. It, it will be, we, we've we got a lighting scope that we can show you. It lights up the whole part. Okay. The whole part. Okay. Of course, the LEDs are, are much more, they're brighter and much more efficient than what's out there now, so right. it'll it'll light up a, a wider span, so it's it'll be nicely lit with the new lights. Okay. So $100,000 towards City Park as far as it'll go. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we'll start looking at budgeting throughout the next budget cycles, additional funds, in terms of a plan to start working on getting the rest of these needs taken care of. Do those tennis courts need resurfacing right now? They look pretty good. I think they were due this year. Uh, when was the last time, if I could keep Dr. Keller's attention, when was the last time we uh, resurfaced the tennis court? Four years, Joe. They, they look And they're great. due every... They're due now. I know. Is it every four or five years? Five years, Joe. I mean, we, we always put it off as long as we can. Right. Well... They look pretty good. I play on them, but I'm used to them. So I know we have one gentleman in town that would love them resurface every day, but we just yeah. can't do it. <laughs> we're not going. We're not going to resurface them until we have to. Okay. Okay. So any other comments today? So uh, certainly y'all will be gone for meetings this evening. So it'll be I think four amigos tonight. So uh, until this evening, do we have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Make motion. A motion, Mrs. Second. Flowers, second by Mr. Right, Tinsley. All, all in favor, please rise. Have a great trip, man. Oh. Y'all don't party too hard. Oh, Y'all have fun. Where are you going? I hope you have Well, I was up there about so much. It is a whole five minutes of taxation. I think I know we started. All right. Dan? Dan?